Praise the Lord, friends. We are teaching today on the blessing of the Lord. We've been teaching this subject all week. We began early this week, and we began with this scripture in Proverbs chapter 10, verse 22. It says, it is the blessing of the Lord that makes one rich, and sorrow adds nothing to it. Praise God. And what does that mean when it says the blessing of the Lord makes rich? That's exactly what it means. The word for rich in the Hebrew is the word asher. And it means this, to be, to be rich, to have riches, to gain wealth. Hallelujah. You know, I've got a nephew and he partners with me. His name is Asher. Praise God. And that kid is so blessed. You know, everything he touches, you know, he, he's taking some lessons from my son, Aaron, and, and he goes out and buys and sells stuff, you know, junk stores and then sells it online, makes money, praise God, started working for the neighbors. They like him so well. You know, we're talking about a high school young man. And uh, the neighbor started paying him $30 an hour. Now, this is just odd jobs. That's not an everyday job. But my goodness, that's a lot of money for a high school age young man. And, and you know, the blessing of the Lord's on the man. So uh, praise God, it is the blessing of the Lord that makes us rich and adds no sorrow with it. As we study this, the, the first lesson we begin to get into is we begin to talk about the covenant of blessing. We found out in the first 1,500 years of humanity, from Adam to Noah, there's only three times it says in the scripture that man was blessed. We find one of them in Genesis chapter 1, verse 28. The second one in Genesis chapter 5 and verse 2, those are both speaking about the original creation, Adam and Eve were blessed. But then it's not until Genesis chapter 9, 1,500 years later, that God speaks and God says that Noah and his sons were blessed. Now, we, then we go into Genesis 12. That's about 500 years later, so about 2,000 years after Adam. So Adam lived about 4,000 B.C. Jesus, uh, uh, Abraham lived at 2,000 B.C. And God makes a covenant of blessing with Abraham. In Genesis chapter 12, verse 1 through verse 3, he said, I'm going to bless those who bless you. I'm going to curse those who curse you. In you shall all the families of the earth be blessed. Now, the scripture actually says in Galatians chapter 3 and verse 8 that when God spoke those words to Abraham, that God was preaching the gospel Amen. Before, amen, before it happened in to Abraham. Hallelujah. So how he was going to use him and make him a blessing. And so he said, I'm going to bless you and make your name great. And you're, you're going to be a blessing. I'm going to bless those who bless you, curse those who curse you. And in you shall all the families of the earth be blessed. So, so for the first 1,500 years of man's you know, existence on the earth. There's only three times that it's recorded in the scripture that it says man's blessed. Two of them are in the original creation. One of them, Genesis 9, verse 1, in the life of Noah and his sons, God said they were blessed. And then God makes this covenant of blessing with Abraham about 2000 BC. Now, when he makes this covenant, it says he's blessed in Genesis chapter 12. He makes his covenant blessing. It says God made him very rich in Genesis 13. Genesis 15, you know, God took him out and showed him the stars of heaven, said, this is how you're going to see seed going to be. Genesis chapter 17, God says, your name no longer is going to be Abram, but Abraham for a father of many nations have I made you. And he confirms that blessing again with him. Then in Genesis chapter 22, we see that, that Abraham takes off Isaac up to offer him. The angel of the Lord stops him. God speaks the blessing. And God ultimately says, I am Jehovah Jireh. I am the Lord, the one who provides for you. I am the one who blesses you. In blessing, I'll bless you. In multiplying, I'll multiply you. Then we see in Genesis 24, verse 35, that Abraham's servant uh, goes out to get a son for Isaac. And he said, I am Abraham's servant. The Lord has blessed my master greatly. And the Lord has given him camels and donkeys and, 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 and sheep and, and flocks and herds in abundance and silver and gold and men servants and maid servants. So, so my master is a very blessed man. He's a very wealthy man and the Lord gave it to him. Praise God. But we find out from when God made that covenant with Abraham, that covenant went to Isaac. Isaac was blessed. It says in Genesis 25, verse 11. It says in Genesis 26, Isaac sowed in the land in the time of famine and reaped a hundredfold. And he had possessions. And he waxed great. And he became grew great. And he grew until he became very great. And he had possession of flocks and possession of herds. And the Philistines envied him. My goodness, God wants to bless you so much. He makes you an example of this 
this is how I treat my kids. But we found out it didn't end with Isaac. It went on to Jacob's life. Jacob was blessed. Then, jo you know, Laban tried to change Jacob's wages 10 times. But you know what? God blessed him in spite of it. And when Jacob, he left the land running from Esau, he had nothing probably but a loincloth and a staff. He came back. Man, he, was, he gave his brother Esau something like a million dollars of livestock. He, he gave him sheep. He gave him goats. He gave him cattle. He gave him camels. I mean, he was a blessed man. And that was only a, a gift off of the top of what God had given him. So when you get involved in this covenant of blessing, you say us, yeah, because it went from Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, Joseph, Jesus, and then it went to us. We inherited that blessing. Amen, the blessing of Abraham in Christ. You can read about that in Galatians chapter 3, you know, all through the chapter. And it says, if you be Christ, verse 29, you're Abraham's seed and heirs according to the covenant. You can also read Romans chapter 4, verse 13 to 16, that says we receive those promises by grace through faith. So if you put your faith in Jesus, you are the seed of Abraham, and you have a right to the covenant blessing. Now, I'm going to talk about something different today. I'm going to talk about the priestly blessing. And we read about the priestly blessing earlier this week in Genesis chapter 14, when we talked about... Um, Abraham and him taking 300 Abram at that point in time took his 318 servants went to get his you know his nephew Lot back and his goods that they had taken from Sodom and, and man he, he cleaned house he got it all back man don't let the devil run over you go get back what he's stolen from you amen hallelujah you know I shared a testimony about how a preacher gave me a scripture when I was in the blizzard in the cattle business didn't know if I'd lost half my cattle and I didn't know for over a month this preacher came right in the middle of it and gave me a word, fear not, you shall recover all. And listen, friends, I have got it all back. I got it back seven times over. This hasn't happened in my life once. It's happened a number of times. But I keep believing God, and God keeps increasing me. So don't quit believing God. Keep your faith in Jesus. Amen? Now, we, we go from Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, Joseph, Jesus. Amen? To us, and we're, we've inherited this blessing in Christ. Now, I, I, tell you, I want to tell you another uh, testimony. There's a man in town. His name is Jared Anderson. He, he has a tremendous ministry, worship ministry, travels around the United States, around the world, ministering the gospel, ministering music, songwriter, super blessed man, wrote the great I Am, wrote, you know, wrote a lot of great songs. Anyway, Jared, a number of years ago, was up ministering. I believe he was in Michigan. And somebody stole his vehicle and his trailer, trailer full of equipment, like $100,000, if I remember right, of equipment, sound equipment, music equipment. And uh, they were staying the night in the hotel, and it looked like they weren't going to get anything back. And we did a concert at our church when we were over on Elkton Drive here in Colorado Springs to raise money for Jared. We, we, we re received an offering that night of about $8,000. Thank God that's better than nothing. But when I sent the check, $8,000, I, I, I gave them. A word in there and I said fear not for you shall recover all their administrator called me and he said you know it looked like or, or talk to my worship pastor at that point in time it was Casey Cruz we've had seven different worship pastors in this church since we started and uh, but any anyway uh, told Casey and listen when pastor Lawson gave that word it looked like there wasn't a chance in the world that we would get that stuff back but one of our people went out there, and they were at a gas station gassing up. Somebody came out at the gas station. How random can this be? And talked to them and told them, you need to go look in this place, so on and so forth. And they went, and they found all of their stolen property. Praise God. And they got it all back. You see, Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And the Word still works. And if you'll believe the Word, the Word will work in your life. Hallelujah. Thank God we can see the Word working. Amen. And so, praise God, we have this covenant of blessing, and we have these words that from God. We have the Holy Spirit directing us in this covenant of blessing. And how can you lose? Well, if you don't believe, you'll lose. If you won't believe, surely you won't be established, Isaiah 7, verse 9. So you've got to keep believing God. But if you keep believing God, I guarantee you, you keep believing Jesus, you're going to win in eternity. Hallelujah. That is the good news. Now, today we're talking about the priestly blessing. So we're going to move on into Numbers chapter 6. In Numbers chapter 6, the Lord spoke to Moses. We're going to read this. And he, he said, speak to Aaron. Aaron was the high priest. 
and to his son, saying, In this way shall you bless the children of Israel, saying unto them, The Lord bless you, and the Lord uh, keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift his countenance on you and give you peace. And they will put my name on the children of Israel, and I will bless them. In other words, he told him that he wanted him to speak a blessing. And there is power in the spoken blessing of God. In fact, in Deuteronomy 10, verse 8, it tells us the, the responsibility of a priest. He says, Deuteronomy 10, verse 8, At that time, the Lord separated the tribe of Levi to bear the ark of the covenant of the Lord, to stand before the Lord and minister to him, and to bless in his name. So we're to bear the covenant of God. The, the word of God that means to us today in, in, in a today sense. Praise God. We are to minister to the Lord. We're still to do that. The Bible actually says in Hebrews 13 verse 15. By him, by Jesus, let us therefore offer up the sacrifice of praise continually. That is the fruit of our lips giving thanks to name. And to bless in his name. We are to bless in the name of the Lord. So God spoke this. Now, when he spoke this, there's a number of things that he said. Now, if you begin to understand the Hebrew words, it gives you a whole picture of blessing. And I want you to begin to understand this blessing because we are priests in the new covenant. Jesus is the great high priest of the new covenant. And we are a priesthood of believers according to 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 5 through verse 10. And according to Revelation chapter 1, verse 6, the Lord made us a kingdom of priests, or kings and priests unto God. So, so you begin to understand that and then study the book of Hebrews, and you'll find out that we are a priesthood of believers. So just like the Old Testament priesthood was to speak blessing over the children of Israel, we are to speak blessing over the people of God. Now, in Numbers chapter 6, verse 22, when the Lord, in verse 23, when he said, speak this blessing over the children of Israel, say to them, the Lord bless you and keep you. The word here for bless, I want you to get the picture of these Hebrew words, is the Hebrew word barak, and it means to kneel, to bless, to be blessed, to be adored, to praise, to salute, to cause, to be, to kneel. In other words, when we surrender to Jesus, when we bow our knees to the Lord Jesus Christ and to surrender to him, we put our place in, in a place where we can begin to receive his instruction and thereby receive his blessing. You know, the Bible says this in Isaiah 1 verse 19. It says, if you be willing and obedient, you shall eat of the good of the land. So it says, the Lord bless you. Be blessed by the Lord. Be favored by the Lord. And the Lord keep you. Now, the word keep here is the Hebrew word shamar. And it means to guard or protect, to preserve, to keep, or to save life. The Lord is the one who guards you. The Lord is the one who protects you. The Lord is your keeper. The, the keeper of Israel will not slumber or sleep, the scripture says in the book of Psalms. The Lord protect you. The Lord keep you. The Lord save your life. Thank God we read a scripture. You know, and, and the Lord said, I am your shield and your exceedingly great reward in Genesis chapter 15, verse 1. Thank God he not only blesses us, but he protects us. Now he goes on and says, the Lord make his face to shine upon you. Now this word for shine it is the Hebrew word hour, hour, like owl, hour, O-W-R. It means to become like, to bright, to be bright or to shine, to make shine, to set on fire or to be glorious. You see, God wants to set you on fire with the glory of God. Hallelujah. And so it says, the Lord make you to shine, his face to shine upon you, and, and the Lord be gracious to you. Now, when, when we read this word gracious, this word is gracious is the Hebrew word shalom and, or, or peace. It's kind of, the, the word gracious is actually the word Canaan. And it has some different meanings that I don't, well, I can look it up right here really quick. The word Canaan, and this word Canaan, uh, uh, means this, to be gracious, show favor, make favorable direct. So, so it kind of fits along with this. To be gracious, to show favor, to make favorable, to, to direct favor too. So the Lord is gracious to us. The Lord shows us favor. The Lord directs favor our way, and he makes us favorable. Thank God I have favor. I not only have favor with God, I have favor with man. I have a good understanding. And God is directing favor with me. 
When we started this church, man, we prayed and we spoke the favor of God. We said we have favor in this city. We have favor with spiritual leaders in this city. We have favor with business leaders in this city. We have favor with people in this city. We have favor with the government of this city. And we have seen so much favor. We've seen favor in our building programs. We have seen favor in everything that we've done. We've had a hitch or two, but praise God, God's been with us and really helped us. And we haven't, you know, we've had, a, you know, like I said, a battle or two, but we've, we've had a tremendous amount of favor. And so the, he says, when he says, the Lord be gracious to you, that's like Canaan, like the promised land. We're living in the land of God's promise. This is our place. This is the place that God called us to. I'm telling you, I'm not just waiting for the sweet by and by to get my blessing. I'm not just waiting to get my steak, you know, you know, something, you know, in the sweet by and by in heaven. I am, I am looking, I eat some steak on a plate today, glory to God. My wife likes filet mignon, hallelujah. I like prime rib, ribeye steak, New York strip, glory to God. I take a filet once in a while. Amen. Thank God. Man, God is good to me. He takes good care of me. Hallelujah. You know, he gave us a promise that is, he'll bless our bread and our water, take sickness from the midst of us. His word is working. Now we go just a little bit farther. It says, the Lord lift up his countenance on you. The Lord, and he says, and he says, and give you peace. The word here for peace is the word shalom. Shalom, it means this, completeness, soundness, welfare, health, prosperity, or peace. The Lord make you well, make you whole, spirit, soul, and body. May you have peace and prosperity, health, and well-being. Glory to God. When the Jewish people greet one another, they say shalom. When they leave one another, they say shalom. You know, they understand the power of the spoken word. You know, when my son Aaron graduated from Princeton University, actually, this was my son Peter, excuse me. When my son Aaron graduated from Carnegie Mellon University, when my son Aaron graduated from Carnegie Mellon University, they had a Jewish rabbi pray at the graduation. They also had a, a, a Protestant minister pray. I want you to know this Jewish rabbi prayed much more scripturally than this Protestant minister. Glory to God. You know, the Jews understand the power of their words. My son Aaron, at a period of time, had a, a Jewish doctor that was a flute student. My son Aaron played flute at a very high level, got his doctor degree, studied with, you know, three of the top four teachers in the world. And it was a tremendous thing. Glory to God. And uh, God really blessed him in, in that area. He still plays the flute beautifully. If you hear him play in some of our service, he's got an amazing anointing on him for worship. But he, he plays the flute beautifully. But as he did that, when he, this Jewish doctor just loved him. This was down in Houston, Texas when he's going to Rice and University where he got his master's and doctorate degree there, studying with one of the top flute teachers in the world. And um, as he was there, and this Jewish doctor liked him. This Jewish doctor had him over when they, they celebrated, I think it was his 65th birthday. And he had, you know, brothers, sisters, family came from all around the world for this birthday. And Aaron said, I never heard them speak one negative word about anybody. You see, because if you study the Bible, the Bible teaches us to speak life. The Bible teaches us to speak words of life. God says, listen. Moses, I want you to tell Aaron to speak these words of blessing over the children of Israel. Say to them, the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. And they will put my name on the children of Israel and I will bless them. The final word that we study here is the word for name. And, and it's this word. It's the word Shem. Put my name on them. That's talking about my fame, my reputation, my memorial. Make, God wants to make you a mon monument. Put my glory on them. God wants to make you a more memorial. Again, God wants to bless you so much that, that he makes you a testimony of this is how I treat my children. And as we talk about this priestly blessing of the Lord, man, we see so much when you begin to understand what this actually means. Praise God. And so the Lord says, you proclaim my name over them. You proclaim my favor and grace over them. You proclaim my blessing on the children of Israel. And you know what? We are priests of the Lord and we are to bless in the name of the Lord. We're to bear the word of God. We should be speaking the promises of God's word over the people of God. Hallelujah. 
We, we need to remember that. Remember that verse, Deuteronomy 10, verse 8. Now, as you begin to understand this blessing of the Lord, we understand, first of all, Melchizedek pronounced a blessing over Abraham, right? And we are the seed of Abraham. Then Moses told Aaron, who was the great high priest, to speak a blessing over the children of Israel. And that went to the Levitical priesthood. And they were to continue to speak this blessing over the covenant people of God. Then we find out that we are the seed of Abraham through faith in Jesus. So we need this blessing spoken over us. And you could speak the blessing over yourself. But we also find out this, that we are the priests of the new covenant. Turn with me to 1 Peter chapter 2. 1 Peter chapter 2, we're going to read in verse 5 to verse 10. I'm going to show you how we're priests of the new covenant. To, and we are to bring, uh, speak words of blessing to, uh, you know, to people. And, and speak words of praise to God. Now he says this, 1 Peter 2 verse 5 to 10. He says, you as living stones are built up a spiritual house, a holy priesthood to offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God by Jesus. Wherefore, as it's contained in the scripture, behold, I lay in Zion, a chief cornerstone, elect and precious. He that believes on him shall not be confounded or ashamed. Unto you, therefore, who believe he is precious, but to those who are disobedient, the stone which the builders disallowed, the same is made of the head of the corner. A stone of stumbling and a rock of offense, even of those who stumble at the word being disobedience, where, whereunto they were appointed. But you are a chosen generation. You are a royal priesthood. You are a holy nation. You are a peculiar people that you should show forth the praises of him who called you out of d darkness into his marvelous light. He says in verse 10, who were before not a people, but now you're the people of God who has not obtained mercy, but you have now obtained mercy. We are the people of God. We are the family of God. Amen. We are a chosen generation. We're God's kind of people. We're God's family, his kindred. We're his offspring. We are a nation of, of believers. I'm not talking about black and white and yellow and red. I'm talking about Jesus. If you be Christ, then you're Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. Galatians 3.29 says, verse 28 says, this, if you're the children of God, it, it, it's not Greek or not Jew, Gentile. It's not Greek or Jew. It, it's not man or woman. It, it's not gender. It's not race. It's not gender. It's not religion. It's not slave or free. It's Jesus. And if you have Jesus, you have everything. If you don't have Jesus, you don't have anything. If you've never received Jesus, you need to get born again. You need to pray with me. You can pray right now and you can call our prayer ministers. Say, Heavenly Father, I believe in Jesus. I believe that he's your son, that he died for my sins. And, and, and that you raised him from the dead the third day and made him Lord. And right now, Jesus, I ask you to come live in me. Jesus, come live in me. Just ask him right now. Jesus, come live in me. Forgive me for my sins. And live your life through me and be my Lord. And Jesus, as you give me the strength, I'll live for you. If you prayed that prayer, you just give us a call today. Amen. We have a very special gift for you. Just give us a call. We love you. And God bless you. Amen. Hallelujah. God loves you. Now. We've been teaching here that we are the, the priesthood of believers. The Bible says in Revelation 1 verse 6 that he made us a kingdom of priests. But I've got one more group of scriptures and I, and I don't have time to share them all. But it talks in the first part of Hebrews 7 about Melchizedek and about Abraham how he gave a tenth of the, of the spoil to Melchizedek. And it actually says in this group of scriptures that when Abraham gave that, he gave that tenth. That Levi paid tithes in Abraham. So it's not something Levi did. It's a gift that Abraham gave. So Abraham's gift satisfied the debt of many generations. Now Jesus' gift, he gave himself. He gave everything. Has satisfied the debt of every generation. So when we give, we don't give out of debt. But we give as a seed that we sow. And there's a blessing on that. Amen. As we go down and read on through Hebrews chapter Seven. It says Jesus was made the guarantee of a better covenant in verse 22. It says he continues forever and has an unchangeable priesthood. He is, he is the great high priest of this new covenant. Wherefore, it says in verse 25, he's able to save them to the uttermost that come to God by him. So he'll not only save you spiritually and emotionally, but he'll also save you physically and financially. He says, for such a high priest became us who is home, holy, harmless, undefiled, separate from sinners, and made higher than heavens, who does not need 
Daily as those high priests to offer up sacrifice first for his own sins, then the people's. But this he did once when he offered up himself. For the law makes men high priests who have weakness. But the new covenant since the law makes Jesus the son who is sanctified forevermore. Amen. Jesus is this great high priest of the new covenant. We have a better covenant established on better promises. And what makes it better is because it's, it's secured by Jesus. Jesus is the one who fulfills the righteous requirements of the law. So when you believe on Jesus, you inherit the covenant by faith in Christ. Hallelujah. And you can receive those blessings of the covenant today. All of the promises of God in Christ are yes and amen to the glory of God by us. God gets glory when you walk in his promises. And Jesus died and rose again so that you can receive his promises. So if you prayed that prayer, you give us a call today. If you'd like to get this teaching, I, I've got four, you know, it's taken us four days to teach this on television. We haven't got through all of it. We won't get through all of it in four days. But man, I've got three teachings here on the blessing of the Lord. This is one of my most requested teaching. You need to get this. You need to get a blessed mentality and realize I am a covenant person of the Almighty God. I am blessed by the Most High God, the possessor of heaven and earth. And if you'll get that down on the inside of you, it won't be long until your financial condition, your physical condition will change. Amen? Because the outside will follow what's happening on the inside. Thanks so much for tuning in. We love you. God bless you. You want to give an offering? You want to become a partner? You want product? Give us a call today. If you need prayer, give us a call. We would love to hear from you. Thank you. And God bless you richly.